Hey guys, me like Big Boom here, and today I'm going to be hopefully showing you guys how to increase your FPS in Unturned. I have gotten this question a ton in the comment sections, in tweets, in my livestream chat, all over the place, and every time I read these comments, I have just always thought to myself, just lower your graphics settings. But I've come to learn that there are some more things that can be done to increase your frame rate beyond just having all your settings on low. That is what I'm going to show you guys in this video. To start, there are still some people curious as to what each graphical setting does, especially the new ones that were added yesterday, so I'm going to very briefly go over them and mention how much each setting affects performance. Before doing this though, enable your frame rate counter so you can monitor your frame rate alongside me when you're changing your settings. You can do this by pressing escape in game, clicking the options button, and checking show FPS slash ping. Also, make sure VSync is disabled. This is what limits your frame rate to the refresh rate of your monitor, which is usually 60 FPS. You can disable it by going back into the main menu, clicking the display button, and unchecking VSync. Next, let's actually tweak the graphics settings. You can access your graphics settings by pressing escape in game and clicking the graphics button. At the top, we have a slider that helps greatly with performance, and that is draw distance. It's how far away objects have to be before they disappear. If your draw distance is low, your computer doesn't have to render as many objects, and the better your performance is. Drag to the left for best performance. Beneath this, you have a checkbox for enabling landmarks. This is what allows you to see extremely low detailed versions of buildings and trees from extremely far distances away, allowing you to see very, very far out into the distance. Now, because the models are so low detailed, this doesn't have much of an effect on most computers, but you can turn it off for the best performance. Next is Bloom. This has little to no performance impact on most computers, so this is really up to personal preference. It's what makes bright things appear bright by making their colors bleed with an aura of light around the source. It's really noticeable in explosions and fire and looking at the sun. Uh, if you don't like that, it's all good. It's really all up to personal preference. Next is Chromatic Aberration. This offsets the RGB values near the sides and the corners of your screen to create an interesting yet subtle TV-like effect. I personally like it, and since it basically has zero performance impact, keeping it on or off is all up to you. Next is Film Grain, and same as Chromatic Aberration, this has very little to no performance impact and is up to personal preference. It makes the screen slightly grainy to make the game look a little more stylized. I like it as well. Next is Clouds, to enable or disable the floating clouds overhead. It's, it's quite simple. This actually has a pretty considerable performance improvement when disabled, despite it just being floating objects up in the sky. Next is Terrain Transition. This has little to no performance impact on most computers and is what makes the cool hard transition between things like grass and dirt or sand and gravel. With it off, it just blends everything together. I believe it's only available on deferred rendering, so, you know, it has no performance impact, so just turn it on, it's nice. Next is Height Fog. It's the fog that's shown when you look far out into the distance and helps performance slightly when disabled, so just disable it, to be honest. Next is Windy Foliage. It's what makes grass and trees sway back and forth. Disabling this actually has a decent performance improvement, so I'd recommend disabling that as well. Next is Ragdolls. Disabling this makes zombies and players disappear when killed rather than falling on the ground and flopping around. Disabling this doesn't help performance much on most computers, and besides, having it disabled is confusing because you kill them and they disappear, so just keep it on, it's fine. Next is Debris, and also similar to Ragdolls, it makes all those things disappear like fences and trash cans when you destroy them rather than rolling around. Uh, this also doesn't help performance much when disabled, so just keep it on, man. Next is the Blast Mark setting. This is what makes scorch marks on the ground after an explosion or all over the walls if you throw it in a house. This has basically zero performance impact. Just enable it because it looks really cool. Now Rain Puddles is a really cool one. This is something that you will only notice during a storm and it creates these insanely awesome puddles everywhere that reflect the sky and everything. I mean, for me, this does cut my FPS in half during rainstorms, so disabling this is definitely recommended if you're having performance trouble during rainstorms. Next is Skybox Reflection. This is an option to enable or disable the ability to see the sky in reflective objects like puddles. It doesn't really help much in performance, but I mean, you can disable it if you like. Next is anti-aliasing. It's a feature used in all video games, or almost all of them, to make pixelated edges less jagged. There are multiple options here, but having it off helps performance the most. 
Anisotropic filtering is a feature used in many video games as well to make textures look less blurry and mushed together when viewed at very shallow angles. So if you're lying prone and look at the distance, you'll notice that the textures do look a little more detailed with anisotropic filtering enabled, but it is a little intensive for computers, so I'd recommend turning this off if you're having performance troubles. Effects duration is how long blood splatters and bullet holes and scorch marks stay there before they disappear. Uh, disabling this helps performance only when in hectic situations like busy arena servers. It's fine to keep this on. Next is foliage density. This is how much grass you see all over the place. Having it off disables grass completely for the best performance, especially when wandering around the forest. It also makes it easier to find people and, you know, more FPS, easier to see things. Just turn it off, man, unless you really, really want to see grass. I mean, I like the look of it, so whatever. Next is sun shafts. It's what makes the sun appear as bright as it is with beams of light coming out of it. Uh, disabling this actually has a pretty considerable performance improvement. Next is lighting quality. Having it on ultra has very detailed and accurate shadows, and the lower the setting is, the more pixelated the shadows become. Having this setting on off disables shadows overall for considerable performance improvement. Ambient occlusion is the darkening of crevices and corners and stuff. Disabling this has a considerable performance improvement as well. Reflection quality is in charge of anything that has a shine to it. Whether it's puddles or metal objects, they all reflect their surroundings to some degree, so having this off helps performance greatly, even if you're not looking at a reflective object. I gain like 40 to 50 FPS by turning this off. Water quality is another big one. Having this on Ultra has water reflections, and the rest of the settings make water increasingly less impressive looking. Having this on the lowest settings has a very very good performance improvement even if you're not looking at water, so once again, I'd recommend turning that off as well. Scope quality is changing the resolution of the scopes in the game. Having this lower makes it more pixelated when you're looking down the scope so that your computer has an easier time rendering the dual screen scope system. If your computer is having trouble with rendering the dual screens when using a scope, uh, you can disable it overall by setting it to just off. This has a minor improvement for most computers, though maybe major for some. Next is outline quality. This is the highlighted glow around objects and items when you look at them. Having this setting on low has a very minor performance improvement and only when you are highlighting an item. Next is animation quality. Now this has pretty much no performance impact at all on most computers and is in charge of how smooth player animations look in the game. I mean you can lower it if you like but you're really not going to get much out of it. Now next is a toggleable option to change between deferred and forward rendering. Nearly all computers, especially new computers, will experience improved performance with deferred rendering, as well as getting the added benefit of anisotropic filtering, cool blood decals, reflections, the scorch marks from explosions, and more. If your computer is older, forward rendering might give you better performance, so try both settings and just see which one works best for you. Now those are all the graphical settings. In my case, I went from 120 4 frames per second with every setting on max to 310 with everything as low as it goes. But let's say all your graphic settings are already as low as they possibly can go and you're still having performance problems. Try making your resolution smaller. I mean, sometimes it's difficult for a non-gaming PC to pump out 124 million pixels per second if you're using 1080p, so understandably, just try and lower it down. You can do this by pressing escape in game and clicking the display button. It the game allows you to go all the way down to 640 by 480 if needed, but it looks terrible. I'd recommend 1280 by 720 if possible, it keeps the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, looks alright and the user interface skill is fine. Uh, in my case, I went from 123 FPS with 1080p and ultra settings to 150 FPS with 720p and ultra settings, and then on 640 by 480 I went up to 175 FPS. It's a minor improvement, but it's there if you want to use it. But let's say you're still having issues with the lowest resolution and the lowest graphical settings. Try lowering your field of view. I mean, it might make you nauseous, but seeing less of everything to the side of you means your computer is just rendering less of the world and you're getting better performance, though very little. I personally experienced a 10% improvement by doing this, but it's not worth it for me. I just, I get a headache really, really quickly by playing like this. When it's all up to you, you do get a performance improvement by doing this. Now let's say even if after this, with your computer running on low settings and in 480p resolution in the lowest field of view, you're still having issues hitting 60fps, 
there are still options available uh, to start try disabling Steam Overlay. It's that thing that pops up when you press Shift Tab and allows you to message friends. It's always running in the background and can bog down performance. You can disable it by right clicking Unturned in your Steam library, clicking Properties, and unchecking Enable Steam Overlay while in game. This helped my performance by like 10%, so I'd recommend it. Now we're running out of options here, but don't worry, there are a few more options available. One of which is to try playing in windowed mode. I don't really know the reasoning behind this, but I've noticed a very, very slight performance improvement by playing in windowed mode rather than in full screen. You guys can try it out if you'd like. It is in the display options, and you'll then have to deal with looking at Unturned in a super small window. Now let's say that didn't help you very much at all, which is understandable. You can also press shift Control escape on your computer to open up the task manager. Go into the process Processes screen and make sure this is while Unturned is running, right click Unturned.exe, navigate down to Priority, and set it to High Priority. Now it does warn you that this could cause system instability, I seriously doubt that will happen but you can do this at your own risk. Basically this makes sure that your computer is dedicating as much of its processing power to Unturned over other programs that you're running like Skype or an internet browser or Steam or anything that's running in the background. It will prioritize running Unturned over all of that so you may experience improved FPS. This is actually the option that got me over a thousand frames per second in the Unturned main menu. So. Going from 124 FPS to over a thousand, I those are really all the options I have available to you. I can't really think of anything else that's possible in regards to improving your frame rate in Unturned. If you guys can think of anything else, be sure to comment it down below to help some people out. But really, that's all I can think of. If you guys are still having issues, I'm sorry to break it to you. You're just gonna have to build or purchase a new computer. I mean, Unturned may look basic, and a lot of people cite that as reasoning behind why it's not okay for them to be having bad performance, but I gotta tell you, it's really, really not as simple as it seems. I mean, having to deal with dynamic lighting, shadows and physics, multiplayer aspects of moving people and vehicles and items, buildables and zombie AI, weather effects, and most importantly, being an open world game built in Unity, which is a non-custom engine, is considerably taxing on your computer, and especially a non-gaming computer with no dedicated graphics card. At minimum, your computer should at least have a decently quick CPU from the past three to four years, four gigabytes of memory, and a dedicated graphics card in order to run Unturned even remotely well. Your computer may run games like Call of Duty or War Thunder or Battlefield fine, but those games are very, very specific in regards to shooting people in a very small size map. Unturned has that in a basic sense, but so much more with these buildables and open world aspects that it's difficult to optimize a game that just simply has so much stuff in it. But then again, at the same time, Unturned is actually a pretty dang good game for what it is. You don't need a crazy computer to run Unturned. I mean, I personally might have a pretty crazy rig for playing Unturned, and I do get asked that a lot. I mean, I don't always play Unturned, I just record Unturned. But to show you guys, yesterday I went to the store with $370. That is $30 cheaper than a 2TB Xbox and built this computer. It's no crazy computer by any means whatsoever. It may look cool, but here's the thing. In Unturned, 1080p, 60 FPS on ultra to high settings. I mean, look at that. Gaming on a budget, now that is what I am talking about. And Unturned isn't the only game that this computer can tackle. For $370, that is pretty good. The specs will be in the description down below if you are interested. $370 does not include the cost of the operating system in the case since my family had an extra copy of Windows 10 and I personally splurged on the case because I made it Unturned themed, man. Olive green military color with a zombie face on the side. I built this computer entirely for this video, so it only makes sense to make it Unturned themed. But then again, I've got a high-end machine myself once again for gaming and editing and streaming. I personally have no use for this PC, so I'm giving it away. A cool and cheap Unturned ready gaming computer, also Unturned themed, built on a budget. If this interests you, it's free to enter into the giveaway. The link is in the description down below.
Now also as a heads up, unfortunately because of shipping costs, this giveaway is only available to people within the 50 United States. It would actually end up costing me nearly the cost of the computer to ship it out of the country, so sorry, it has to stay within the state so shipping stays within reasonable cost. Perhaps I'll host a worldwide giveaway of some Steam cards in the future to make up for it? Maybe? I don't know. But I mean that does wrap up everything regarding performance in Unturned and how you can achieve that sought after FPS. If these tips helped you out, be sure to drop a like down below. If you are still in need of more frame rate, perhaps Christmas time will be in your favor because you really don't need much to run a game like Unturned. Once again, I have the specs and pricing down below of the parts I used in this Unturned computer. Hopefully this is all of use to you. That's all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and do all that gibberish because me like big boy is out. Uh.